Welcome back. This is a Santorini earthquake update for the 21st of February 2025. Activity is continuing downwards with the energy released also down. Energy released is coming into the range of what would be called normal, but the number of quakes being recorded is still over 500% above the norm. In today's Santorini earthquake, we'll look at island movement over the past two days, visit the Anidros seismic station and then have a look at what some professional geologists are saying of the situation at the moment so cumulative energy release volcano discovery as usual banging data from them we can see that we're still on this trend the the slope the steepness of the slope is starting to level out but it's a logarithmic scale this is normal we can see our normal cumulative energy released is here and we can see that we're coming into that region at least with regards to the number of earthquakes being registered, we can see we're still well above, well above the norm. Seismic locations. The epicenters are back over the past 24 hours to be surrounding Anidros Island. I think if someone were to say at this point that Anidros is the centre of the swarm and perhaps even key to understanding what is happening and could help us predict the next few days, I would agree with them. So we've got Anidros Island here. The uh, pinks, the reds and the oranges are the last 24 hours and we can see all around Anidros Island again. Yesterday we were down here and we're back to Anidros today. Uh, seismic data from Anidros. Anidros has got a seismic station and uh, that is published daily. Well, it's published, it's updated constantly, this uh, seismic data. Link in the article which is linked to in this video description if you want to go and see the source data for all the uh, information in this uh, video. So uh, what are we seeing with the Anidros uh, seismic graphs from yesterday the 20th I said that we're, we have roughness in the lines basically we have underlying seismic activity going on although things being registered as earthquakes are much less. This is 21st as of uh, the time of this video and we can see the lines are still rough. Perhaps we could say that the the lines are a bit smoother than yesterday, maybe. It's a very close, but for sure we're getting more spikes, more um, things that may actually be uh, big enough to register as earthquakes. But either way, we're definitely, I think, we're, I think it's safe to say we're definitely seeing more spikes on the 21st versus the 20th. About the ongoing light seismic activity at uh, Anidros Island, what would ongoing seismic activity not registering as an earthquake signify? I said here that bear in mind I am a layman, I'm not a professional geologist, seismologist or volcanologist and I think it could reasonable, it could be reasonable to expect that what we're looking at here is magma movement. Magma moving through channels in the crust relatively easily versus before because these channels are now devoid of water due to the heat of the past two weeks. I'll get into this in a bit more detail when we look at the uh, Geology Hub video. We have reduced earthquakes, we have reduced intensity of earthquakes, but now we are seeing this ongoing seismic data at Anidros Island. Normally I think we'd expect these lines to be smooth. Could it simply be magma reorganizing itself in the crust, filling the space left by water? A reorganization that will eventually die down and cease? Of course it's possible and it, this is probably by far the most likely outcome. Island movement, I didn't cover this yesterday so because it helps just to have a couple of extra points on the uh, grass to see what trends we were seeing. So island movement, EOS, in the 18th of February update, I said EOS northerly movement could be slowing. This looks like it's a bit premature. Movement rate north still looks constant. However, this, however, it's westerly movement and uplift still look to be slowing. But I think it's important to note that the west and north movement for EOS is not a normal movement for this island. Let's quickly jump into the uh, data for the island so we can see. So this is the trend. The trend is easterly for EOS. Actually, on this graph, it's starting to say it's going... Um, returning east. I'm not sure if that is accurate. Uh, it's saying that general movement is south and we can see the trend is showing north and uplift. It's kind of stable but we have seen an uptick recently. If we look at the monthly data, this is why I say that perhaps it's not accurate what we're seeing on this one. You can see that we're definitely seeing a consistent speed I would say of north movement and the easterly movement I would still say 
sorry, the westerly movement, which is not normal for EOS, I would say it's slowing down, but it's still we're still proceeding west against the normal movement. Um, with regards to uplift, I'd say that rate is uh, relatively constant for this time, this earthquake swarm, but obviously not normal in general for this island. So the movements are still bigger than what we would expect. That's EOS Island. Coming back to Sandorini, everything I said in the 18 still stands. We're seeing slowing east and north movement. And we're also seeing an earthquake-less downward acceleration of the land in Sandorini. Sandorini is moving down at an accelerated rate, which is which is happening without earthquakes, which I think is a bit strange. Um, Amorgos Island looks to be a stable speed south, possibly accelerating westward movement and a steady rate of uplift. The westward motion is not normal for Amorgos and it's possibly accelerating and uh, the rate of rise there is not normal either so we can see the trend here for Amorgos is a southerly movement and it's saying that we are accelerating south easterly movement and uh, general movement for this island is easterly and we're seeing it moving west and over the last what is it 30 days you can see that it looks to be accelerating uh, in a westerly direction and this acceleration is happening without a corresponding rise in earthquakes which is interesting uh, because the upward movements maybe we're seeing a trend of acceleration and upward movement again this is well above the norm of upward movement so we're seeing island movements even though the rates are slowing this the island movements are still far above uh, what we would consider normal and yet we are not seeing earthquakes accompanying this island movement so coming on to the experts santorini earthquake commentary so first of all geology hub in his latest video you can see it here it's linked to in the strike engine uh, article uh, in his latest video he has mentioned that there is a theory that the theoretical magma died we have talked about that i think uh, one or two days ago in one of the update videos the theoretical magma dike heading from santorini to anidros is putting magma into contact with water possibly and this could be forcing water into existing gaps in the crust opening up these gaps weakening them and then causing more earthquakes basically the water is acting as a lubricant the water pressure is being forced into these cracks opening the cracks up and then they're moving in a more more easily and this is what is causing the earthquakes that we're seeing so this is a, the hypothesis he covers I think he covers a, more than one in that video but this is the one that stood out to me my opinion of his opinion uh, from my point of view if this is happening when that magma is coming into contact with water I assume when he says the water is being forced into gaps it's because magma is pushing it there when that magma is coming into contact with water I think it is reasonable to expect that we are getting a massive increase in pressure and pressure releases as the steam builds up in the crust and then releases could steam explosions within the crust cause such big earthquakes like four Richter plus I don't know but I think it seems reasonable that maybe one or two possibly is caused by something like that or at least they would cause some seismic activity that could be measured by seismographs even if the activity does not actually get classed as an earthquake so either way if we are seeing pressure buildups and reduction well pressure buildup and releases in the crust due to steam and water then I assume that could cause could cause reasonable to assume it could cause seismic activity whether it would be counted as an earthquake or not is another matter so for example in yesterday's update and what I covered up here with for Anidros Island Anidros Island seismograph is showing rougher lines versus the 19th of February and yet the number of quakes being registered is less rougher lines but less earthquakes on the 20th could steam be partly with the partly to blame for the constant barrage of events be it tiny small medium larger that we've been seeing over the over the last two weeks and could it be steam in the crest causing the underlying constant activity at Anidros Island at the moment I guess no one knows really um, next video I uh, looked at was one from Shaw Wilsey um, if we just bring up his video here Oh, it's got the adverts on the start. You'll try. You have to trust me, guys. I'm linking to the video there. 
uh, Sean Willsley, professional geologist, and he's done a sort of a big picture look at the uh, earthquake situation. He has covered the uh, gamut of opinions on what is driving these quakes. He said in the latest video that as far as he is concerned, he would need to start seeing a lot more signs of typical impending eruption for him to think that there is anything but a tiny chance of a volcano erupting, then which is fair enough. My opinion, again, on his opinion, well, m something that stood out to me during this video, something that intrigued me, if you like, during this video, he was continuing to assert that magma movement is not shallow in the area, that the magma in this dike or well, any any magma d movement in the earthquake area, it's sh it's not shallow. But to be fair, he didn't specify what he classes as shallow in his video. But one thing I would say is that, that there is a a magma chamber has been discovered under Anidros Island and it's been found at six to seven kilometers. Again, to me, a layman, that doesn't sound that deep. And given that we don't have reliable uplift data from Anidros Island, which I am constantly banging on about, and given that the Anidros Island has been at the heart of the earthquake swarm, I'd urge caution until we get some hard, reliable data from that island. In his video, he does refer to NIS, I think was the word he used, size, uh, satellite data, which is basically a satellite that passes over the ground to measure ground movements. And he said that that data is not reliable. It cannot be, re it may not be reliable, and it's especially not reliable when islands are small, like Anidros. Having said that, he's saying that it is implying leaning towards insinuating it's a possibility that we're seeing up uplift on anidros of around 80 millimeters i think he said which is let's have a look at amorgos an island and see if that is consistent with what we're seeing at amorgos so uplift well that is much more than we've seen at amorgos island which is the closest island where we do have satellite data if we look at the model data, uh, if we look at the trend line and still beginning of 2025, let's assume that is at, what are we going to say there guys, 10, 8 millimeters and we're up to 25 millimeters. So what's that, 825, someone help me out, 14, 17 millimeters of uplift over the past, uh, f well, for the duration of this swarm so if what he is saying is right that there's an 80 millimeter of uplift at Anidros Island it doesn't sound out of it doesn't doesn't sound unusual or impossible and it would explain the uplift in well maybe it would go some way to explain the uplift that we're seeing here and the uplift that we're seeing here and perhaps even the downward movement of um, Sandorini Island but anyway that that's uh, just a speculation on my part the facts are the facts um, he was saying that's possible, but um, they don't know for sure. Which again, I know I keep banging on about it, but I think it's worth it for us to not know if Anidros Island is moving up or down. I think is a huge, uh, huge hole in our knowledge. So he's super optimistic that there's going to be no volcano. I'd say yeah, for sure. He's probably right. But let's let's be realistic here. We don't have hard and reliable data in regards to uplift from Anidros Island. So. Let's just wait until we get something in there. And it's quite a bit more than EOS, I think, as well. Let's quickly just check EOS for uplift. What is that saying? I'm pretty sure it's not 80 millimeters, but let's just check it quickly. So if we can say the trend is there, which is what? Four millimeters. So say six millimeters, eight millimeter uplift in EOS over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, it's not 80. It's not 80 millimeter uplift. So that would be something unusual. Uh, happening at uh, Anidros again. We don't have the uh, the uh, the data, so again, I'd urge caution with regards to uh, writing. A, I'd urge caution with regards to saying that we that the data is not pointing to the volcano because there is a big hole in our data. So, summary of this earthquake update for the 21st of February. General reservations I have. A reservation I have is the uptick in this very slight seismic activity versus the 19th on Anidros. I mean, why are we seeing, why weren't we seeing light activity or not so much light activity on the 19th on Anidros, but we're seeing it again on the 20th and the 21st. What's changing? Interaction over such a long time between water and magma. 
what sort of condition has, less, has this left the crust in? Has it weakened the crust where these interactions have been happening? The crust in the Aegean is already relatively thin. Um, I've just quoted an article here. The, uh, the Aegean crust thickness is homogeneous and relatively thin within the whole region. Thirdly, we are still seeing movement in the islands. I did touch on it above. We're still seeing movement in Ios, Eos, Amorgos, Santorini, and yet earthquake activity is well down. How can we be seeing, how can we have these island movements without earthquakes? Are the crust interfaces saturated, i.e. moving relatively freely against one another? Again, something that Geology Hub was saying about water getting push, pushed into the, um, the cracks and the crust. Is this, have we saturated the crust in the area? And then is this why we are able to see island movement without, with island movement, which is well above normal, but with the earthquake activity dropping. So is that what we're seeing, a saturated crust maybe? And lastly, my really main last reservation is the possible connection with the tidal forces and the earthquakes. Uh, I did the video on this yesterday in depth on the tides. There could be maybe possibly a coincidence correlation between large tides and earthquake activity in this region at the moment. And given the pummeling the crust could have taken over the past couple of weeks, if there has been water magma interaction in the crust and explosions causing, you know, constant seismic activity, um, these tides that are coming on the 25th, could they have bigger effects than they have uh, over the past couple of weeks? Conclusion then, uh, regardless of the reservations I've detailed above and regardless of the possible magma water interactions we may have been seeing over the past couple of weeks, the data is the data and the data says activity around the Sandorini earthquake swarm is dropping rapidly. That can only be an improvement over the past couple of weeks and on this basis I would say we are closer to seeing the end of this swarm than we are to the beginning. Yes, the activity we are seeing even today is unusual. But considering the activity we have seen in the previous couple of weeks, as of today, it is much, much less than it was. It's a huge improvement and things, at the moment at least, they look to be returning to normal rather than going in any other direction. If you've got time, you drop me a like. Uh, if you want to see more updates, subscribe to the channel. That's it for now. Look after yourselves and I'll see you again in the next video.